Well hello and welcome to my YouTube channel if you've managed to find it. I've changed the name three times this week. Well last week was my first podcast and I was called Shall I Shan't I? <laughs> you get the message. I think that would have been quite a good one to call it. But anyway I thought it's a bit ambiguous. So I changed it to Create and Craft. No. I changed it to craft and chat you see but I can't remember that one and there's rather a lot of craft and chat so if I thought I can't remember it and there's rather a lot that one's not for me so I sat down and thought about it what do I like doing I like knitting doing embroidery quilting sewing I made myself a dress earlier in the year um and I used to spin, but I used to spin in the days when you couldn't buy tops, what they call tops. Nowadays, you can buy all the, the wool, all prepared, washed, dyed, and you just buy it in tops and you spin it. And no, I went to the farmer, bought the fleece, cleaned the fleece, absolutely did it from basic and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll show you a ball of wool. I've got one ball left. And um, I had rather a lot of um, garments that I made, which uh, have, you know, gone somewhere, been given as presents or this or that. And But I have got a ball of wool, but I love spinning and I love chatting. So I thought, why not spinning a yarn? So it resonated and I can remember that, spinning a yarn. So that's what I'm going to call myself. So welcome. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband and my five chickens. And it's rather hot for them today. In fact, it's absolutely baking. In this country, it's either baking or I'm moaning because it's raining or whatever. But today I could do with a lovely walk. You know one of those forests that just have got the, the oh, you know, not, not a thick one, but those forests that are dappled, just dappled shade. I could really do for a little stroll through one of those, just to be not in the full sun. Our garden's very, very sunny. And uh, at the moment, the only, well, there is a little bit of shade, but not much. So the chickens are in their little bit of shade and I'll let them out later. They don't need to be let out because they've got a large area. But they still like to come out and sit with me. Last Tuesday, Mum came round for afternoon tea and I said, she's not that keen on birds. But I said, look, Mum, we'll go up and sit with the chickens and let them out. They won't come anywhere near you. And what did they do? Plop themselves right down by her feet and went to sleep actually so you know you, you, you just well who knows but yeah they like being with they like being with humans so although they've got a very large space which is absolutely full of hollyhocks now I'll put a little bit up at the end so I better crack corn otherwise you know I'll waffle and you know I felt myself I gave myself some you know things that I was going to talk about and I found myself getting a little bit, it was a pressure and I'm not very good with pressure. I'm not very good at all with pressure. I like to just, you know, do it. So I thought, well, some weeks I might talk about this, some weeks I might talk about that. Let's just see, shall we? Some weeks I'll be right in the mood for counselling and it'll be counselling the whole time. Another week I'll be right in the mood to tell you about quilting. I might even show you how to do a bit. I just don't know. This is episode two. I'm playing it by ear. I am going to put up here one of my quilts. I took a photo of it the other day because it's on my uh, little spare single bed. And if ever you felt like quilting, it's just made up of two inch squares. So you cut out two inch squares. You put a bag of light fabric in one bag, a bag of medium fabric in another bag, a bag of dark, and you can grade it a little bit more like that. In, in, count, in, um, in quilting terms, we call it the value of 
a fabric. So if it's very dark, it's a very dark value. If it's very light, it's a very light value. But I'll show you what I did just by sewing two inch squares together, but getting the values right so it makes a pattern. And while I'm on the way of quilting, I'll show you this quilt just to go over the knees. And I've backed it, hand quilted as you can see. I've backed it with a brushed cotton. And so that lovely and warm, you know? And it's beautiful fabric. Absolutely lovely. It pops. In real life, it really does pop. Beautiful colours. By someone called Tilda. I think she's from Norway. Here. Little rows of embroideries. I love the little mouse. They're very naive, but they're fun. Again, not difficult. Something anyone could try. So that's my little quilt. I hope you got to see that. Yes, I think if I give myself, you know, uh, this section and that section, I I'm put off doing it. I, I get a bit, oh, will I do it right? Will I not do it? Uh, so I'm just going to chat. And when the time's up, the time's up and I'll do some more next week. So do you remember the first thing I did um, was the linnet in the way of handicraft? And it's a funny thing because we had a very good handicraft teacher at school. And I was telling you about the dress. And we were supposed to make a dress over the term. I mean, how fantastic to be taught how to make a dress. When I look back, if only I'd listened. I made both my girls all their clothes. I made all my clothes, you know, in the 70s. And I'll show you some of those. Well, I've got one dress. Anyway, I'll show you that next time. But what I'm saying is, I was really taught, I mean, everybody's knitting socks now. I was taught how to knit socks at school. Did I want them? No. Did I want a homemade dress? No. So I didn't want to learn, and that's all there is to it. So the day before it had to be handed in, I said to Mum, Oh, Mum, will you make this dress for me? Well, my Mum was the sort of, she was brilliant. She'd run things up and, you know, it was super, it was okay. So she ran up this dress, pink it was, pink cotton. It was a shift dress. And of course, she didn't, you know, she didn't have all the machine that you could do all the edges, zigzag or anything like that. So she just sewed it together. I cobbled it, She, you know, I took it into school. I got absolutely floored. It was the worst bit of sewing my teacher had ever, ever seen. And uh, <laughs> I didn't care because at least I'd handed it in. And I look back and I think, well, maybe it was the engagement about it. I just wasn't engaged. Therefore, I didn't try, didn't do it, and I didn't care, which is such a shame because I could have learnt so much. But there are times in our lives when we just soak up if we're taught something, and there are times in our lives when we just don't want to know. And the next one was the siskin. And do you remember last week at the end, I put up some siskin that were in our garden. We had three or four come and I was able to get quite close and take them. They're a winter visitor, but they are stunning. So yeah, if you're just catching up, have a look back at last week's. They're beautiful. Anyway, this is what I did. And I'm going to have to get it at a certain angle so that you can see it. That's not too bad, is it? 
but it's very difficult. And I loved it. I loved doing it. And I learnt about birds. Don't we all love birds? I'm sure we do. What would life be like without the sound of a bird and all the different colours? And once you start trying to learn about them, well, my brother bought me a brilliant book. I'll show you that next week. Um, it's the language of birds. Oh, I'll share that with you next week. Here we go, another list. So over, uh, you know, over this pandemic time, lockdown and that, uh, I've been sharing with my friends knit a natter and we've discovered some new words one of and they have become part of our vocabulary one of the new words is wabasabi it's a japanese word and it really means taking pleasure in things that aren't just quite right life you know it doesn't have to be perfect and again if we're thinking of our handiwork it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not trying to emulate things that come out of a, uh, a shop and all of that. This is handiwork and that's the joy of it. And so to I think to be successful at handiwork and to enjoy it, wabasabi sums it up. If we can adopt wabasabi and accept failures, if we can accept things not being quite right, then it's very helpful. And it's such a beautiful word. At the beginning of lockdown last year, I picked a vase of flowers and I had them on my table here and I've still got them. And I think this sums up Wabasabi. I'll show you. Now they were bright, vivid yellow. They smelt so divine. Well, that it, they filled the whole room and look at them now 18 months later but I love them and that's wabasabi taking joy and pleasure in something that's not quite how it's meant to be so so what <laughs> so I was thinking about you know the little bit I was telling you about my life and um, when I started counselling I, you sort of have to get, well, you have to get your life sorted in your head, you know. And so I decided to write my life story, just for me. And I thought I might, well, read you a bit of it, really. You know, it, it was just for me. But uh, it might be quite, in well, might be interesting, it might not. You'll switch off if it's not. That's the joy of this. And here it is. Here's what I wrote. Oh, I think that's been said before, but let me show you. What have I got here? Ah, here I am. I think just before I moved to Harlow, really. So that's a joy to have that. And um, I start off on page one, 1949 notable events. The most expensive public school in Britain is Harrow with annual fees of £315. February, Robert Mitchum, the film star, was jailed for two months for smoking marijuana. April, British warship attacked on the Yangtze River by communists. May, Shanghai, fell to communist Mao Zedong. Landowners were shot. London. A study finds that Britain's press is incorrupt and uninfluenced by outside interests and unmonopolistic. June, George Orwell wrote 1984 because he had a dread of communism. July, the Transport and General Workers Union bans communists and fascists from office. Um, sugar is back on rationing at eight ounces a week. Sweet rationing back to four ounces a head due to the dollar shortage. Belt tightening measures. 
The Lone Ranger debuts. September, Britain devalued pound from $4.3 to 2.80, which is a 30%, 30.5% reduction. Banks and stock exchanges closed the next day to recover from the huge shock. Milk ration is cut from three to two and a half pints a week on the 11th of September, then on the 18th to two pints. Petrol goes up to two and threepence a gallon. It's about 11p in today's money, and I should think it's even less now. A survey of the last 10 years found Britain spending more on alcoholic drinks, but less likely to get drunk. Spending less money on food, but more likely to eat out and far more likely to end a rocky marriage in divorce. The needle is off the diplomatic Richter scale as Russia tests the atomic bomb. In November, the BBC buys Shepherd's Bush Studios from Rank. And in Prague, the government says church marriages are not recognised. So the hits of 1949 were Buds and Bows, Riders in the Sky and Baby It's Cold Outside. David Lean, the director of hit cinema film Great Expectations. Oliver Twist film is banned in Berlin as Fagin, represented as Jew, takes people back to Hitler's time. And Michael Balkan's Ealing comedies Kind Hearts and Coronets, Whiskey Galore, Passport to Pimlico. And on the 28th of December, Flying Saucers declared do not exist by the USA. And the new word for 1949? Baby Boomer. And that's what my generation is called, Baby Boomers. So on that note, I think I'll leave it and I'll say cheerio. I was going to do this once a fortnight, but my daughter said, oh, mum, do it once a week. So I'll try and do it once a week. You'll forgive me if I don't, but I look forward to seeing you next week if, it's, if, if I can. So cheerio. Thanks very much for tuning in. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week. And I will still be called Spinning a Yarn. <laughs>